a big question here is if a young criminal breaks into your home tonight, potentially armed with a weapon, and you confront them, how should you respond? Should you defend yourself in your home or should you flee, knowing that it would mean a criminal could ransack your house? Ash Gard is a personal safety and self-defence expert who has served in the Australian military and has 20 years' experience in security. He joins me now. Good afternoon, Ash. Oh, hi, Bill. How are you? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Um, you've heard a lot of the, uh, the sentiment expressed by a lot of listeners today. The attack in North Lakes this week really was horrible. Uh, it's happening more and more lately. Is this the sort of thing you've heard as well in your job? Oh, absolutely. Uh, for years and years, it's not new. And I think that's something we need to perhaps highlight a bit is that that sort of crime is not new. It's just something that's probably beginning, getting a lot more media, potentially, with all the different platforms that are available. But as far as, uh, you know, break-ins and home invasions, is nothing that's particularly new. Um, and I think that's probably something that's important to remember here yeah. right from the onset. Yeah. Well, like I said earlier, and I read a couple of texts you might have heard there, many of our listeners have uh, been asking how they should react uh, if they become the target of a home invader. They want to arm themselves with something. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that everyone's got the right to defend themselves against violence, there's no doubt about that i think the question is when should that be used and based on what i've heard so far and and the, the reports that we're getting a lot of it's over property and i would be very unlikely to defend myself again you know and, and to protect property at all a person or life sure so defend, defending yourself or defending someone else absolutely i would you know get physically involved but if it comes down to property putting your, your body on the line for a piece of property that's not the advice that we would give mm, is there a so there's a, is there a circumstance that, it's only when there's another a life involved that's the only circumstance you think you feel you have the right to stand and defend yourself not your home forget about the home and the contents look yeah I, that, that's exactly how i feel about it I, I think the question has to be asked if someone does lose their life uh defending property was it worth it in the long run and unfortunately i just don't think that's the case yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, a hard, it's a harsh reality. I would be much more inclined to, um, you know, encourage people to uh, secure themselves in a, in, a, in a strong room in the house, uh, their family as well. And, uh, you know, if, if that strong room is breached and the person's intent is to do harm to them, then, you know, at that point, you know, physical intervention is, is definitely an option there. Um, but it wouldn't be the, the first thing that we would suggest that people should do. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't know enough of the circumstances surrounding what happened in North Lakes other than uh, uh, what we've been told is that um, they were disturbed by dogs, the owners, um, the Lovells. They got up, the intruders were in the house. Um, and I, I recall hearing the police say the wife went to uh, help defend husband and that's when the altercation happened. It spilled out from the the front of the house out into the lawn and that's where the fatal stabbing occurred. But uh, the point I was want to make of of this is the police message is always immediately called triple zero but as you'd be aware this stuff can happen in the blink of an eye in a split second you've got to make a decision and there are many circumstances where as i'm sure probably happened at north lakes you don't have time to to do that no. first you've got to act in the first your first instinct yep yeah and action can be you know barricading yourself inside a room and then as soon as possible call police because unfortunately if you don't notify someone that there's a problem and you get hurt there's no one coming to help you yeah, no knows about it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So, so, so ultimately, um, you know, you really want to, as soon as possible, notify police that there's a problem. You think yeah. people who are worried for their safety, as we've heard and in, in, in read in a few texts, uh, should arm themselves with some sort of uh, device? I, I don't want to say weapons because there's no, you don't need weapons. But do you think? Do you think? Do you think people should arm themselves to defend um, themselves? <laughs> I think they should arm themselves with knowledge and ways to prevent and deter the likelihood of their house being targeted in the first instance. And then, you know, there's a lot of layers from a security perspective. There's a lot of layers that have to be breached before they get to a point where they're harming the person inside the house. And I think arming yourself with the knowledge first to prevent that happening as, as much as possible in the first place. And then definitely, I mean, I've built a career off it, having some tools to defend yourself is the worst case scenario does happen to unfold but ultimately it comes down to locking the doors making sure there's nothing that's of value being seen by people that are looking into your house or on your property um and you know you also got to take into account that if you do get physical with someone or a group 
you don't know if there are weapons involved. You don't know how many people are unfortunately involved. We had a, a gentleman in the news recently who ran out in his underwear mm. to deal with a couple of blokes, and you know he uh, he grabbed one of them, and that was fine. And then all of a sudden, five other guys got out of the car, mm. a baseball bat and a knife. So you have to take those things into consideration. And if I want to sit about how much defensive tactics are done, one versus five with two armed people, that's not good odds. Yeah, yeah. And just before I let you go, just quickly, uh, they don't seem to a lot of these young. Young defenders, and, uh, offenders, I should say, don't seem to care about surveillance footage, CCTV cameras, any of that sort of stuff. Are they worthy and, and worth having? I guess it helps police uh, in investigations post. Well, I, I think it's better to identify that you've got a, a problem. Like, uh, at home, I've got at the moment, I've got a dog, obviously, who barks at night. The first thing I do is I flick on the CCTV cameras, mm. and I have a look externally to see if there's any movement around the house. And I do that before I venture even out of my bedroom or out of my house to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm not walking into something that, that might be uh, a problem. But at the end of the day, sure, they can deter some. They'll deter the well-intended people. Um, but unless, if I've got a, a cap on or a hoodie on, it's very hard to put a hand on heart and say, hey, that's definitely the person that robbed my house with yeah. that footage, unfortunately. Yeah. So they, det they deter some. They're better for a warning system, if I'm honest, where, you know, you get an alert. So your dog goes off and then all of a sudden you've got an alarm from a camera going off saying, well, that's basically two things backing up that there might be someone in the environment. So you might want to, you know, take a few measures to make, make yourself safe. Yeah, and that would give you, I guess if you did have a bit of prior warning like that, it would give you that chance, as you mentioned earlier, to maybe jump straight on the phone to the police and go, hey, I think someone's uh, trying to get into my house and lock yourself in a room. 100%. I really believe that if you think there's someone in your house, you should make yourself safe, call the police, and, you know, if you go and invest, it's a natural go and investigate and people do things, you know, they react rather than respond is what we sort of say. Mm. They, don't, they, they haven't been taught anything, but it's normal when they hear a ruckus to sort of rush towards the problem for a lot of people. Yeah. And as, as a result of that, they get there and then the decision has to be made there at that, at that moment in time. And sometimes they don't have the, the knowledge or the skills or the ability to deal with the problem that's unfolding. Um, you know, so, so there's, a, there's a fair bit around the education side there that could really make people a lot safer. Yeah, good advice. Thanks very much for sharing it with us, Ash. No worries, Bill. Ash Thank Gard, you. personal safety and self-defence expert. He made some good sense there, didn't he? What do you make of that? Will you change your mind now on uh, wanting to rush out and, and attack? Has it, has it given you a bit of food for thought? One double three eight eighty two is the talkback number. Last opportunity before...